And you're watching Interface here on SABC3. My name is Tembi Samachele, coming to you live from the Tourism Indaba in Durban. We're talking tourism this evening, and we do invite you to send us your SMSs on 33726, and also give us your comments on the state of our tourism industry on our Facebook page, Interface, on SABC3. Now, we heard this weekend from our minister, our tourism minister, Martina Svanskalfek, talking about the focus being on domestic tourism and how the state is trying to boost those numbers to about 18 million tourists by the year 2020. So we're going to talk about that especially today. And our guest uh, in this hour is Tulani Nzima, who is the CEO of uh, SA Tourism. And we also joined in the studio by Hanele Dutoy, who is the acting GM of Tourism Enterprise Partnership. Welcome to both of you and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Let's start you. with you to learn. I mean, when we think about tourism as ordinary South Africans, we're thinking about those that are coming from maybe Europe or uh, from America. Mm. How much of a mix do we have in our tourism industry in terms of those that are coming from the African continent and also domestic tourism? If, if you look at uh, the arrivals for 2011, over 70% of our arrivals are coming from the African region and that includes a contribution from the South African region. But if you look at uh, contextualizing why domestic tourism is important, it's because the world over, mo many countries start off by strengthening their own backyard, their own uh, rock uh, of the domestic market, and then from there they can grow into other territories. But that's not what we have done in Africa, is it? We've started the other way around. We've looked outside and we said, come see our stands, come see our beautiful mountain, come see all of these things that we have. Yeah. And now only we're turning our focus on our own people. Why is that? Yeah, sadly, that, that has been the culture. And, and many people believe that South Africans have been deprived of the opportunity to travel within South Africa. Yeah. I, I think I see it the other way around. South Africans have deprived themselves of the opportunity to travel in South Africa. We have 8.3 million people last year who arrived in this country to enjoy themselves in South Africa. Mm. And it has never worried South Africans to find out exactly why do we constantly, continuously have so many people coming to what enjoy What are these our country. people enjoying in our country that we are not? Well, it's all here. Whatever you're looking for, it's all here in Zanzi. We encourage you to go and find out. Here are the things that people are coming here for. I'm not going to talk so much about the safari because if you're a South African, if you're <laughs> yeah, an African, you sure. think, oh, it's, it's basic stuff that you see. But certain things that are very important to us, you go out there and discover your culture, heritage. Go out there and discover adventure. Go out there and enjoy the lifestyle. Go out there and enjoy the natural beauty of the echo caves. Go out there and enjoy the beauty of Cape Town and Durban, the wetlands. This is what people so are coming here Don't forget the Eastern for. Cape. We don't actually have to go. <laughs> well, Eastern Cape, there yeah. is quite a lot that you can see in sure, the Eastern, the sure. friendly uh, city of uh, Port Elizabeth. Thank you, thank something you. All very, my people very are watching from the well. Eastern Cape. Yes. So uh, I think it's, it's the variety of all of those kind of things. And if it is very good for foreigners to be here, then it must be good for us. What, right. what sometimes worries me, let me just make this point. What worries me, firstly, as a South African, secondly, as a as South African tourism, is the fact that we have a lot of foreigners who are very confident about our country, who are very positive about our country, to the extent that they can sell you South Africa. Mm. And you as a South Africa do not actually know South Africa enough. That's that sad. is embarrassing. That's sad. Let's mm. bring in Haneli Dutoy, who is the acting GM of the Tourism Enterprise Partnership. How do you play a role in, in what the focus is at this year's Tourism Indaba, which is domestic tourism? There's, there's quite a big role that TEP plays in the industry as one of the, the, the most successful, I think, public-private partnerships, um, specifically around economic development or enterprise development. Um, TEP has about 4,000 small tourism businesses that's registered to us, and, and we believe that this really is the beating heart of the tourism industry. It's in these small tourism businesses that you can find value for money, you can find the cultural and heritage mix. So from a domestic point of view, that we really are trying to focus on that. Now, a lot of effort and a lot of focus was turned on the tourism industry when we had the World Cup. 
we had a lot of people going out there and getting loans to you know extend their houses because they were expecting all of these tourists to come in and and stay over at their houses others went out and got huge loans to build small mm -hmm. bnbs and we had all of that happening and then it didn't quite materialize as we had all hoped in terms of the tourism how has that impacted on what you are doing now in the drive towards domestic tourism? I think let's look at the benefits of the Soccer World Cup, what it has brought to the country first. It, it has given us the opportunity to speed up our infrastructure development. The road infrastructure is not what it used to be. The hotel infrastructure, there was a significant investment in hotels, so we had an addi additional number of rooms into the system, and we made sure that our airports are upgraded many services were actually upgraded as a result of that. So that is the first benefit that we got. But if you look at the numbers themselves, there was a projection leading up to the Soccer World Cup that we could be getting about 450,000 arrivals. The final number was 310,000. But let's also put context into it. This is happening at a time when the whole world was gripped in that global sure. economic meltdown. So we did get a, get a lot of benefit. But even more importantly is the exposure that we got as South Africa, the positivity about the country. Look, I think we all appreciate that mm. we did get some good things, but we have to touch on the more sensitive aspects of it, like the fact that we have huge hotels mm. that were built and now there aren't enough people to fill the rooms. How does TEP play into this? I mean, in terms of uh, supporting the local businesses, how have you seen the impact of the World Cup and the lack of mm. the, the tourism numbers impacting on small businesses? You know, it's interesting because although there seems to be a very pessimistic view out there about the World Cup, we, we went from the day that we heard that we are getting the World Cup, we were very um, vocal in saying, don't come into the tourism industry if this is not something that you want to be in. So mm. I, I can only talk, obviously, on the part of the small tourism businesses. So we were very vocal. We did a, n a numerous roadshows with Grading Council, with South African Tourism, to warn people about the dangers because we had learned from other, from the Rugby World Cup and from the Cricket World Cup, we had learned the, the dangers of what people expect. Mm. So, so the message was very clear out there. Um, and we had a very mixed bag of responses. We have some small tourism businesses that, that really has developed beautifully through the World Cup. And then, yes, especially when you look at the more rural businesses who were really hoping to get some business through the World Cup, they were maybe not as, as successful as mm. they'd hoped to be. Mm. Um, what is very important, though, is that um, the World Cup, and I, again, I'm sort of hopping on the positives here, but it had broken down the silos because previously if you had spoken about tourism in South Africa there, there used to be very specific silos and people didn't work together as well and what the World Cup has taught all of us to do is to form those partnerships and it's in those partnerships that we are now able to take our small tourism businesses to international platforms into the local market to say you know the infrastructure that you would put in place and and bearing in mind that those that we work with we made sure that it is sort of a limited and that the risk is not too high for them don't think that 2010 is a get rich quick scheme yeah. is what we had told all of them so so yeah it's been quite positive actually if you think about it all right i'll take your word for it you are in the industry <laughs> but uh Tulani, when it comes to those that did go that extra mile and are not reaping the rewards is there a, a plan in place for filling those hotels for keeping those people in business for helping them in some way yes there is definitely a plan we recently launched the domestic tourism strategy. The objective of this strategy is to make sure that we start galvanizing South Africans and encouraging South Africans to travel South Africa as tourists in their own country. It is also to inculcate the culture of travel, to make South Africans believe that whatever it is that they are looking for to go on holiday, it's here in South Africa. And in fact, people in, in Cape Town have got to start visiting Johannesburg and visiting uh, mm. Devon to discover mm. those kind of facilities and experiences that I've spoken about. The objective is that every province, every region has got to start encouraging other people, enticing them with what it is that they have to offer to the extent that at some stage, every province, every region must be in a position where they can say, here are the top five, top three must-see tourists experiences, tourist uh, places in our region. When we do that, it, it will then start the travel, fill up the, those empty beds, use those uh, uh, restaurant facilities. That's how we can start generating our own tourism in South Africa and uh, helping create employment. 
Okay, I, I, we've got to go to break, but I want to ask both of you this question, and maybe you can think about this while we go to break. There's been a lot of campaigns that you have worked on, and in all fairness, a number of the provinces have done really good work in terms of promoting themselves. And still, we're not seeing the domestic numbers uh, as, as much as we would like to. Um, we saw the short left campaign. We, you know, there's been a number of good initiatives, and, and people are not rushing to go and visit these other provinces. What more needs to be done to entice those local visitors to go and, and explore their own country? I'd like you to think about that. We're going to continue with that right after this break. Welcome back. You're watching Interface here on SABC3, coming to you live from the Tourism in Daba in Durban. And remember, you can take part in this discussion. We're talking about mainly domestic tourism and how we can boost that and make sure you are traveling your country and you are seeing all of the different things that South Africa has to offer. Remember that you can always SMS us 33726. That's how you get in touch. And also on our Facebook page, Interface on SABC3. And we were talking earlier about how we can actually make sure that we do our bit. Uh, as South African tourism as TEP and also as just general South Africans to try and encourage everybody to go and visit the different provinces. What else needs to be done over and above what we have done? I mean, we've, we've showcased the mountain. We've showcased uh, what's up in Mpopo. Mpumalanga has done really well. Eastern Cape. Everybody's really doing their bit. Even KZN in terms of showing us what's good about the province. But still, we're not getting that mobility. Okay, let's start with you. <laughs> um, I, I, from from our side, um, one of the things that we have realised that is the price issue. Um, you know, South Africans are sensitive about pricing. It has been the economic downturn. We've had to look at what type of value for money can you get. And um, you know, the, I think the thing to not disregard is the the visitors to the visiting to your family and friends in the different provinces. And how can we tap in whilst they are there to maybe add a day into the itinerary to spend around you know something affordable that the family can enjoy together. Um, so from our side, what we are doing with our small tourism businesses is really talking about pricing yourself right for the domestic market. You have a beautiful product, you might be able to charge a little bit more in the international market, but locally, understand what the sensitivities are and price accordingly. But how do you do that when the costs are rising? You know, you've got uh, everything going up from petrol to the price of cheese. How do you then make sure that you make your profit but at the same time, you you bring your price to the level of most people. Yeah. Look, we, we, we're not saying don't make money. I think that is one of the most important things. And you often find that when a small tourism business comes into the industry, they don't understand pricing. TEP is developed as part of our service offering to small businesses, a, a toolkit called Pricing. It's a one-day workshop where you sit down and you really start then understanding what are the costs. So you start including everything from electricity to water, uh, to the bed, to the linen, um, really to understand from the small businesses side, what is the output or the input cost so that you can determine the output cost. And what we're saying is to make it attractive and to keep you busy, an empty bed or a bed with a, with a person in is better than an empty bed. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can just catch that pricing at the right stage, but understanding where the pricing comes right. from. <laughs> Sir, what do we do? What more do we do? We, we believe that uh, the short left campaign has actually worked very well. It has generated awareness, generated interest in the domestic market, but we needed to do a little bit more and change the focus. Has it brought up the numbers though? The, the, indeed, in the okay. domestic market it worked. Uh, but the only challenge that we had with short left is the, the target market that we were looking at at the time. We were looking at the, uh, the young generation and that was where the focus was mostly. We have now expanded it in the new uh, uh, tourism, domestic tourism strategy. We are now talking to five different market segments and with different needs, and it ranges from this, uh, the price sensitive to those who can afford to do a little bit more. The, the second thing that we have done in this campaign is to make sure that we, we are informed by marketing insight. We have done very extensive researches to understand exactly what it is. That the three key things mm. that we have discovered that we believe our messaging can be around that. The first one is the price. The second one is people say we are not giving them the reason to travel. In other words, give, them, give me a reason to travel. Why must I go on holiday? So we, we tell people, you go on holiday to reward yourself. Go rest. Go and, go and <laughs> spoil yourself. You know, yeah. go and make new friends and, and so on and so on. The other thing is, where do we get the information if we want to travel indeed? 
So yes, we have to make sure that information is available at the right uh, at price points, making sure that it can actually be distributed to reach all the people that we're talking about in the market segments. Basically, these are the kind of things that we're doing. But let me just indicate as well that although we have seen domestic travel in the past, it wasn't to the same level of focus as we now put. Mm. We are now really saying this has to be our success story. We have to leverage on our domestic strength before we start going out there. The past year has taught us a few lessons. Our core markets of Europe, hit by the economic meltdown, yeah. did not deliver the numbers. Yeah. Where did we get the, the growth from? From emerging markets of Asia and the regional Africa. And of course, domestic is still there. So we are confident that we can reach the numbers as long as we give people the reason to travel, we give them the right price, and we make the information Let's, let's available. talk a little bit more about that price issue. Are we likely then to see the rates coming down because you're trying to entice us to travel our country and, and see more? I think in real terms, the rates are not very high. If you start uh, uh, graphing you, you, this... You can't say rates are not high and then say pricing is an issue. No, no, You're contradicting. No, no. They, I, 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 I'll give you some context into it. In real terms, if you take various uh, uh, establishments, various tourist experiences, and start graphing them over time, over time, the prices have not really gone very high. You will understand that if you look at the airlines environment, for instance, we've had a lot of low-cost airlines that have come into the market and they, they picked a niche in terms of pricing structure. If you look at the hotels, we're talking about the range of hotel facilities. They spread from the one star to the five star. And in between, you have quite a lot of pricing. But when we drive a campaign such as the domestic uh, tourism, we do go there with discounted prices. And that's what we are going to see happening. It, it is geared at making sure that we generate interest, we create awareness, people have uptake. But in, in, in real terms, yes, the prices have not gone as high as we thought it is. But Pietro, you were saying that affordability is an issue for South Africans. Shouldn't we then be advising the industry and saying to them, we need to collectively drop the prices so that we can get this domestic tourism drive to work? Look, that is, that is happening. And this is the advocacy role that South African tourism plays, and it's the advocacy role that TEP plays. And because of the research, um, like Tilani has said, there's 14 different segments. And if you know exactly how to price yourself for the right target market, first of all, obviously, the business has to decide who, who is the target market. Is it the price sensitive, or is it the people that can afford a little bit more luxury? So understanding, number one, who do you want to market to? Number two, what their sensitivities are around price. And number three, then pricing yourself accordingly. So from our side, it's a, it's a role that we would like to play in the industry. And, and I think we have been doing it to make sure um, that the small businesses understand this. On Friday, for instance, we had an annual workshop where we get about 300 small tourism businesses together, um, South African tourism um, showed them the domestic tourism um, strategy or the research that was done and from here we will only take it further okay. every step. Uh, I want us to come back, we're going to have to take another short break, but I want us to come back and talk about the opportunities within the sector. But before we do, uh, Tulani, you spoke a little bit about uh, what's happening in Europe uh, in terms of their debt issues and, and everything going wrong with their economies. How has that hit us in real terms, in, in, in monetary terms? Have we already calculated as South African tourism how much of a knock we've taken from that? Well, we, there are various metrics that we use. The first one is the long haul markets. We're talking about the European markets. Didn't give us the growth that we thought they will last year. They were down 3.5%. And this, this year, at the beginning of January, we have seen some uh, recovery coming from a lot of European markets. So we've got pockets of successes in Europe. In some, in, in some markets, we have not seen the growth. But it also translates in terms of the number of provinces that Europeans visit when they come here. That has reduced as well. The second part is they have, you have seen the actual reduction in spend. Because as long as they don't stay too long in the country, they will spend less. Mm. They, you must also understand that most of the people in Europe, in those kind of economies, who have been hit by the economic meltdown, it doesn't mean they don't have money. They are now just discreet about the money. Right. They spend it very wisely. So they will not spend as lavishly as they used to do in the past. And we must tell them that uh, the Table Mountain has just become one of the seven wonders of the world. And so they have one more reason to come and visit South Africa. Let's take another short break. When we come back, we talk about the opportunities for you that exist in the tourism sector. Stay with us.
Welcome back. This is Interface here on SABC3 Talking Tourism with my guest Tulani from uh, the SA Tourism and also Hanele Dutoy who is with TEP. And we were talking earlier about what exactly we need to do in terms of the opportunities. But just before we went to break, one of the crewmen was saying that it is still way too expensive for South Africans uh, to be able to take up what you're saying. We get excited about the idea of uh, traveling our country, but if you look at the costs that we have to pay for everything that is rising, you guys need to say to us, actually, we're going to make it cheaper for you to travel. Why are you not doing that? We are doing it. Uh, our focus is on the tourism value chain. The tourism value chain starts from the airlines, starts from the tour operators, then it followed by what is happening at the airports. When you, people arrive at the airports, they have to take transport to the hotels. Is that affordable? From the airport to the hotel, the hotel they're staying at, is it affordable? The restaurant they, they are going to go and eat at, is it reasonable or not? Other uh, tourist attractions that they want to visit, are they reasonable? The, the, the value of taking this approach is to make sure that all of us are not going to go for a quick kill when we have a tourist in the mm -hmm. country. We must all be on the same hymn book, making sure that we understand that this is growing tourism for the future. So okay. we, it won't help if we all operate in silos. We have to be on the same hymn sheet. If we are encouraging tourism, this is how other countries have succeeded to beat us. Mm -hmm. The countries like uh, the, the Singapore's, the Asian countries like the Dubai's, they understand the value chain. And bottom a line, there's something for everybody, no Indeed. matter how much you have. And, you can and, always find something. And not a single one must be allowed to spoil this for us and kill the, 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 the golden goose that lays the egg. All right, I get yeah. that. Now, in terms of the opportunities that are there within the sector for people that want to start those small businesses, Anneli, and, and others that are saying, all right, I, I've been in this business, but I want to expand mm -hmm. and, and go further. You know, how many hotels and B&Bs can you build? What else is there within the tourism sector that you can entice business people with? Mm. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that we have done, and I, and I think if you take the 2010 campaign that we did before the 2010 World Cup happened, and what we are trying to do with the domestic campaign, it's very similar. We we advocating to small tourism businesses and big tourism businesses to work together to drop pricing to be relevant for the market that's coming in. In 2010, I think we, we were actually quite successful because there weren't any outrageously price, or if there were a few, they, it was really only a handful. And if we can have that same um, momentum in the domestic tourism campaign, we will do quite well. What we tell all of our businesses, especially we have a course called Tourism Awareness, where we go into communities, especially rural communities, and we talk to them about the benefits of, of, of tourism, and we say to them, you know, we, we really can't do with another BNB, but adventure activities, guiding, telling the story about South Africa, and I really do want to just touch very quickly on cultural and heritage. Um, it is such an important part, not just for the international tourists, but also for South Africans to get to know the culture and heritage of each other mm. a lot better. So in that lies the opportunity. Culture and heritage, a big one. How many more is beige? Who can we wear and dance? Is there something else that can be dynamic, mm -hmm. particularly in terms of township tourism, mm -hmm. that we can really focus on and take that message out to the world? Uh, heritage and cultural tourism is much more than uh, dancing. Mm. A lot more than that. It, it is about, first of all, reconnecting with your own history. It is reconnecting with your own culture. It is making sure that you understand what is on offer at the apartheid museum what is on offer at the freedom park mm. what is on offer when you go around the country there are many places of heritage that we ourselves as south africans do not know when you when you talk about uh, going to the township rural areas that's where most of these kind of things are lying the heritage the cultural uh, uh, history of our country but your your, your interaction as a tourist with the township life is the reality. That is where people begin to go and make sure. It, travel lately yeah. is no longer about just go and sleep at a hotel. People want experiences. They want emotional connections. They want to make sure that they have learned I'm something. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's the view from the outside. Mm -hmm. How do you sell the township tourism, the heritage to South Africans that say, I know that, I've lived that. What are you gonna tell me about Freedom Park? I, 
You know, that's my story. Mm. How do we then talk to them? You see, you think that South Africans know that, and maybe sometimes South Africans think that they know that, but they don't know the whole story. Um, we have two very exciting products that I really just have to mention quickly. Um, in Fordsburg, we have a tour of Fordsburg, where you learn the most amazing history of how that was part of the struggle that very, very few people actually know about. Um, and we also have, when you talk about the township tours, we have um, a, a seven... I'm going to have to cut you done. because we have run out of time, but I really wanted to get your thoughts as well. Yeah. Uh, just finally, finally quickly, what do you want to say to South Africans uh, in terms of encouraging them to go out there and, and, and explore their country? I want to say to South Africans, the time is now for you to go out there and spoil yourself. Go and share the kind of experiences that foreigners year in and year out come here for. We have it all here in South Africa. Amazing stuff. And you concur. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it there. Thank you so much to both my guests for coming through to our studio. We were live from the tourism in Daba in Durban. And that's the message, South Africa, that there is a whole lot more for you to see. And foreigners have been enjoying your country. And it's now time for you to do the same. From the Interface team, good night.